All right, guys, how's it going back again today? Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. And it's moments like these where you realize why Call of Duty Esports is the most entertaining esport to follow. With Scrappy and Stanley going at it on Twitter last night. Just a couple of days ago, Stanley said that he wanted to ruin someone's dreams. Presumably, Scrappy, based on the drama they had briefly on Toronto, and it exploded last night. They're waging war completely. And the best thing is, they play each other in around about two weeks from now. Very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new, as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. First, of all from Vegas, confirmation that Two Wheel is gone. We did wonder when they made the change a few days ago with Stanley coming in, whether Two Wheel would be benched in the team or whether he would be entirely released in the team. At the time, Clayster said that he thought that uh, Two Wheel was still going to be around as part of the franchise on the bench beds. We know that Vegas have got to where they are today, or at least the Legion have got to where they are today, by not spending any more dollars than they have to and um, that's probably the reason why they've gone down this route. Of course, you know, an organisation like Los Angeles Gullers spent a lot of money but find themselves in the mud financially because they spent too much money. Vegas don't spend anything more than they need and therefore if they could have a substitute player like 2 will remain they would prefer not to bother. Now whether this is good or bad because we have wondered is TJ and Stanley going to work as an SMG duo? Maybe, maybe not. 2 will I thought was valuable for this team did a pretty good job for them during stage 3. They obviously wanted to upgrade their firepower but maybe there is a world in which in the respawn modes 2 will and Stanley could be a more appropriate duo. We talked about the potential about 5 man rotating roster the other day. Seems doubtful that Legion of all teams would be the one to do it, but it was maybe worth meriting consideration and keeping Two Wheel around for a bit longer. The other part though is, I suppose, for Two Wheel is that, you know, he's been released now. If they do want to bring him back, like, they can just go and get him again, you know what I mean? Like, he's probably not going to get signed to another team. So, um, I think it probably makes sense for Legion to do this. Feels kind of bad for Two Wheel. I thought he did a pretty solid job for this team, all things considered, but you can understand why they felt like they needed to pack a punch a little bit in terms of slaying power to take them to where they need to be, I think, Legion, if they want to try and qualify for the World Championship. So that's that side of the story. Of course, that was the tweet from Clay the other day where he said, to his knowledge, Brendan is still a part of the Legion, but um, clearly either miscommunication or they've changed their mind over the last few days. Also, this tweet from Doug I thought was kind of cool. Two Wheel is a player every league team should be interested in. Toronto picked up Hixie and went from good to champions because he's selfless. Brendan, I believe it is Brendan, not Brennan, is the most selfless player I've ever seen. Hard vouch at the COD League. So um, I thought quite the statement from Doug, every league team should be interested in Two Wheel. Like, I'm not sure I'd quite go that far. I know that what Doug is probably getting at here is that Two Wheel is a selfless player, such as a Hixie, that has um, elevated teams. I mean, I think he elevated Vegas a fair bit, what Two Wheel did for the squad, so Hixie has with Toronto, and he also gives a list of other players that do the same thing, puts Prolute on the list, puts himself on the list, I thought it was kind of funny here, these selfless players that enable their superstars, you know, puts Noisy, Wiz, Yeez, obviously a Hixie Prolute that he just throws himself on the list as well third in there. So I guess that's kind of the point he's getting across right, that yes, maybe Two Will could improve other league teams, but um, yeah, because he's a selfless player that enabled the superstars, but the issue is for Vegas they didn't really have too many superstars to be enabled. They didn't, you know, TJ isn't a superstar sub that uh, the Two Will can enable, but maybe there's a world in which another team Hixie has done that for Kleenex and maybe Two Will could do that for another sub around the league at some point in the future. Let's dive into the drama then between Scrappy and Stanley because this was some seriously juicy stuff. So last night they come up with a really cool trailer actually Tronto for their Blueprint Season 3. Of course it's going to be a banger I'm sure because they won this event but um, they made a controversial roster change and during the early part of this video I'll just share it for you guys. Scrappy is talking briefly about this Stanley move. They even bring up on screen when he went on the flank and discussed how like um, oh yeah he's been playing godlike in practice since he's joined Vegas or was actually when he was on Toronto I think he said he was playing godlike in practice and all this stuff and um, yeah obviously they're sitting down with Scrappy and Scrappy says damn we're talking about practice like effectively implying this Stanley guy, even in the trailer itself, and I'm sure they're going to get into it in more detail in the actual episodes, suggesting that, yeah, this guy really wasn't all that in terms of what he was doing for the team, and Scrappy seemingly very satisfied with the change they decided to make. In reality, there's always kind of two sides, and the truth is somewhere in between. I'm just going to say straight how it is. In practice recently, like, I've, I've been playing a god, like, You're talking about practice? Practice? Like, we had so much hate, obviously, with the roster change. We call online players, loudness equalization players. A Toronto Ultra can't be top team. A Toronto Ultra can't do this. 
So then it all starts to kick off, right? And if we look below this tweet, we'll find a lot of tweets got deleted last night. But don't worry, the COD scene is always pretty good nowadays, especially when Stanley is involved at screenshotting absolutely everything. So it starts off here with Stanley replying with the following, my bad for wanting to try in S&D practice. So of course, like Scrappy was roasting him for like this practice stuff. Like, oh, we're talking about practice. But Stanley did say on the flank or whatever he was on that, um, you know, quite a while ago now that really Toronto weren't giving it their all in search and destroy practice, which may still be true. I don't think Stanley's necessarily wrong on that one because Scrappy's reply doesn't really kind of deny what Stanley said specifically, but basically just give him reasons why he was dropped. It seems like Scrappy's been sitting on this for some time. I think he wanted to get it off his chest and just to go rogue against Stanley because Stanley, since he's left, has been talking about, you know, how well Stanley's been playing, how important he's going to be for the new team and all this type of stuff. And Scrappy's deciding, no, I'm going to tarnish this guy's reputation live on air, which is, of course, questionable in general. In fairness, when he was initially dropped, they kept it cordial. Scrappy, when he was on the flank just like two days ago, was being like, oh, yes, yeah, Stanley can definitely improve that team. But, um, you know, maybe under the surface, he had a rather different opinion of the matter. And look, Stanley's now been signed to Vegas. So Scrappy going rogue and trying to take down his reputation in some degree maybe isn't really the end of the world. But nonetheless, it's still pretty spicy stuff. And I don't know what you guys think about this in the comments below. So anyway, Scrappy then replied with all these emojis with a screenshot of when they played Boston. I believe it was after this series where they dropped Stanley. And uh, you guys can see they're playing Fortress Control. They're kind of close to capping B. And then Stanley is, I believe, the number eight arrow here. You guys can barely see it. But you can see this number eight arrow. He's just legging it out here to go to A, I'm guessing, or maybe to hit a flank. Whereas really, he should be hitting the bottom building, probably hitting the flank or helping them on B. And uh, they lost this situation. I believe they lost the map. And after that concluded, he was basically just dropped on the spot from the team. And Stanley says, I made a bad play and I held myself accountable. I just wanted us to try that one day. But Scrappy isn't having any of this, right? So I don't know if Scrappy felt like the other day that it was Stanley that was coming at him in a way because Stanley said right that he wants to ruin someone's dreams after he was dropped from Toronto and um, you know we thought okay maybe that's going to be Scrappy after the kind of beef they had and Stanley at the time said oh my homie backstabbed me when he was initially benched all that type of stuff so maybe Scrappy is he's probably been sitting on this for some time because Scrappy's never really responded to any of what Stanley has said over the last you know several weeks or so and then it just comes all out in one go I don't care anymore everything you say is to make you look like the good person this whole time you got dropped because you're the most selfish player, not because I have a good connection with Charlie, that being Hixie. I hear dumb stuff from you all the time. So I don't sort of it's fantastic to be honest. So Scrubby's just saying like you got dropped because you're a selfish player. Is that true? What do you guys think about that? Interesting question, right? I think when you look at the stats, you look at the numbers, there's a good chance that there's a good argument to say that Hixie is a more selfless player than Stanley is. And I think by comparison, that makes Stanley look like a selfish player. Whether that's true or not depends. I think it depends what the team needs in some sense as well. Some teams need a selfish player to drop numbers and to slay out. Like, um, you know, being a selfish player isn't necessarily bad. If you're prime formal or prime scump, you can be selfish and it's probably going to work rather well for your team because you're going to slay out hard, right? But clearly Scrappy didn't think that uh, that selfishness in, in Stanley's sense was good for the team, if you guys even think that's true, and says you got drops because you're selfish type thing. So I thought that was kind of a quality. And then Stanley replies, I don't do anything to look good. I got dropped and was upset. You were spinning in circles, shooting in the sky and such and destroy practice. 95% of the time, you were always going hard. Either way, you're one hell of a player. Best of luck. I'm not the most selfish player. That's not true at all. So I think Stanley, understandably, trying to defend his reputation here a little bit, right? And make clear because, you know, when Dashi was dropped and there was that episode that came out with the Optic guys and they were discussing why Dashi was dropped, the issues that he had. And Dashi then went rogue on stream and was like, look, this is not the case. I need to protect my reputation here. And you can understand why he would think that. And, um, you know, Scrappy then comes out and says that actually Scrappy was the one torching time in Search and Destroy. That, okay, a lot of the time he was going hard, but sometimes in S&D practice, Scrappy would be torching time and Scrub doesn't like deny any of those accusations so I imagine there's some truth here on both sides and then Scrubby comes back with a different accusation and says up 100 about to beat Florida we lag out instead of getting annoyed at what happens you say thank god we lagged out I was getting smoked everything you do is for your own good I don't want this sympathetic BS now um, I mean this seems almost to me with Scrappy writes that he was trying to like find reasons to get Stanley dropped because to me that sounds like a joke right like I'm just like it's that's pretty funny to be fair and uh, Stanley's like it wasn't that deep bro so um which fair enough and maybe if Scrappy if like it, let's say Hixie had said that I don't think Scrappy would have been too annoyed about it necessarily but maybe the idea would be that because Scrappy was already thinking in his mind like I want to get rid of this guy he's got to go that he says that and he thinks oh yeah another I think addition to write onto the list right as to why we need to drop Stanley so uh, I don't know it pretty much ends there and obviously Insight and others arrive onto the tunnel and it's like what is going on here and obviously all of
of it got deleted shortly afterwards. And then they started subtweeting each other. So like the thread didn't really continue further on from that point. But then they started tweeting out <laughs> images of them winning championships. So Scrubby then deleted all of his stuff and they just tweeted this out, which was um, him, of course, lifting the trophy at Major 3. And then Stanley decided to, in a tweet that was actually still up here, when he won player with the stage. And of course, they won the event right at Major 5 last year. Stanley was effectively MVP of that run. Well, not last year, sorry, but uh, 2021 in Black Ops Cold War when Minnesota won that tournament and uh, Stanley was a rookie and he came in, did rather well. So, um, you know, Stanley tweets that out. And then others were hopping on the bandwagon as well. I thought it was funny. This tweet was fantastic here for the CDL because everyone was tweeting pictures of themselves holding up trophies and the CDL admin comes out with a picture of the, you know, CDL character in the game holding up an actual trophy system. So I thought this is a phenomenal tweet, to be honest. And there were many other ones. Methods holding up his trophy. Like, you know, it all kind of kicked off because everyone obviously was watching this go down between Scrappy and Stanley. And as soon as they started tweeting out images of their winning things, all the other guys in the league, or maybe not in the league anymore, in Zero's case, for example, started tweeting out images of them taking championships over the last few years. Even Optic got in on it, right? Dashy holding the trophy. This is from back at Vegas 2018 and other ones as well where there are other players. Even a Paul X, you know, no trophy though, he says, because when they won the pro it last year in, like, uh, in Columbus, right, which New York are going to go back to again, which uh, seems to be a pretty good venue for them. But when they won this event, of course, with Krim and all these guys, Paul X won it, but there was no trophy, unfortunately, for that pro event they won at the time. But still, they were getting their points across. Even Haggy tweets out his world championship win for back in 2013. So just prime entertainment. And uh, Jacob's like, look, good cod beef all over the time. I need more of it. No real surprise. And what really kicked it off for me was that this from the CDL with uh, the triple spicy emoji, which I'm always going to support. And Toronto versus Vegas Legion. So very good timing here with the, these guys to start up a brand new beef. Now, I think we knew there was something going on there between these two guys after he was initially benched, but Scrappy was obviously holding something in and um, maybe his organization told him, look, Scrap, just delete those tweets. It's, it's not worth it, bro. And eventually he did, but we have still get to see them. So always good entertainment. And the best thing is they play it very soon. So April the 14th, I thought it was great, really, that the CDL admin came out here and just put this all together with, uh, you know, just a couple of weeks away, really, I guess the second week of the call-out, or maybe the final week, I suppose, of the qualifiers. 3 p.m. Eastern, April the 14th, Scrappy versus Stanley, Toronto versus Vegas. Now, we know what can usually happen, because Scrappy has beef with, you know, a few players in the league, not a huge amount of players, but the Joe Deceives drama was kind of spicy for a little while, and, um, you know, Scrap made his thoughts on all of that. I don't beef with dot, dot, dot. You guys can fill in the rest, and uh, well, whether a similar story is going to happen here, we know that Scrappy and Sandy as well, but Scrappy certainly is going to be going hard for this one. He is going to be talking some mega trash into the camera every map they win, I'm sure, but uh, we'll see how it goes, right, because Toronto are going to be favourites in this series almost no matter what, unless something remarkable happens over the next couple of weeks of the qualifiers, and I'm certainly going to be keeping my eyes peeled to the timeline during and post this series, because I'm sure it's going to be pretty interesting indeed. So, like, whose side of the story do you take here if anyone's on this right? Scrappy even replied to this and was thought it was pretty entertaining, all things considered, actually left this tweet up, can you believe it? But uh, yeah, part of what Scrappy said, I'm sure, is accurate to a certain degree. I thought others of what Scrappy said maybe went a little bit too far. But in fairness, Standy was kind of firing shots first over the last few days, so I guess he felt the need to respond. But very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.